Thank you very much and good morning everybody. Um, I'm really glad to, to be here today with, uh, with you all. Uh, I'd like to um, share with you a couple of thoughts that um, uh, we have from uh, Amazon Web Services uh, perspective on how we approach um, training for cloud computing skills specifically and how we define uh, the challenge that is associated with this, uh, as well as what we do specifically uh, in order to make an impact uh, in closing that uh, skills gap. So if you look at uh, what are the technology trends globally uh, that are most in demand, uh, for a couple of consecutive years, Cloud computing is, is definitely number one. Uh, and it is because uh, basically cloud technology uh, is uh, at the moment um, powering most of the um, technology trends that we hear about, specifically artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, or uh, things related to Internet of, uh, of uh, Things or big data. Um, cloud skills are definitely uh, most in demand. Uh, LinkedIn is assessing that this is the number one hard skill companies are looking for uh, in candidates' profiles, as well as uh, trying very hard uh, to make sure that their employees are also upskilling for cloud. As you can see, the numbers worldwide, as well as in, in the European Union, are quite significant. Almost 4 million uh, professionals worldwide are now having some sort of cloud skills. Uh, and uh, it is uh, almost 900,000 across uh, European Union. And the cloud-related vacancies uh, are um, posted um, across the globe and uh, they're growing rapidly. Uh, so almost 300,000 cloud-related vacancies are posted globally today. And that is uh, more than uh, 80,000 cloud-related vacancies in the European Union. As we look at uh, specifically uh, cloud skills related to uh, AWS um, cloud platform, it is more than 50% of total cloud jobs available worldwide uh, that includes the requirements for uh, AWS cloud skills. Now, why is it so important? So cloud has really changed the paradigm in the way how we provision IT infrastructure, how we approach digital transformation. It has become a new normal. Uh, it has allowed companies to uh, scale up and down much faster, innovate and uh, try new things faster, but also at a much lower cost. So the barrier to entry is much lower than it was before. Companies no longer need to, uh, to maintain their huge um, uh, data centers or servers in the basement uh, to make sure that they sustain their business uh, processes. They can just purchase it online. And similarly, the skills that are required uh, in uh, provisioning cloud uh, services has also changed. Um, so cloud adoption and in general digital transformation uh, is super critical for the success of um, most of the companies today. Uh, but it's not just about technology. Uh, it is primarily about people and processes. And that is the change manager, management that uh, most of us uh, are reluctant about because change uh, is uncertain. And so it's, uh, it requires a lot of work and focus in order to make the change happen and make everybody on board and on the same page. 
Um, why is it so challenging in terms of the cloud skills? The way we approach it is that it's no longer just about technical skills. So really hard skills around um, provisioning IT infrastructure, uh, cloud security or data analytics. It is also about soft skills and business skills. So while you are um, learning about how to uh, adopt cloud in your uh, organization, you probably will need to think about how to work in, uh, comfortably with remote management, how to make sure that your, your decisions are uh, data driven. Um, Commissioner also mentioned that uh, uh, it is about lifelong learning. No job is given for a lifetime. And so you have to have passion for learning because with technology ever changing and the pace of it is unprecedented like never before, you have to stay up to date every single day and every single day you will learn new things. And um, with that uh, really uh, approaching change is going to be critical. Uh, being able to work in an ambiguous environment uh, is uh, one of the most sought after skills in a, in a sort of portfolio for uh, candidates for jobs as well as uh, you know existing uh, employees uh, population. So why is it uh, so important to adopt cloud skills apart from uh, what is uh, critical for uh, digital transformation. Uh, when we look at the pyramid of digital skills as they are defined uh, by, uh, um, by being basic, medium or advanced, it is important to, to say that cloud skills are sitting somewhere across most of the skills, uh, but uh, even more critical is to say that actually um, in order to progress and in order to increase or make sure that Europe stays uh, competitive, we need to have more digital creators than we have only digital users. Only then we will be able to really um, bring uh, the digital leader leadership in Europe and, and drive and foster innovation. So what do we do specifically from Amazon Web Services perspective? Uh, the way we define our training and certification strategy uh, is, um, um, is a, a round cloud role based curriculum. So uh, today the education is not just about learning how particular software or services uh, are working and what do you need to do um, to plug in and play. You actually need to learn how to be a better uh, architect, developer, or systems administrator. And that is, uh, that is how we uh, define and design our curriculum. So really focus on the role and what, uh, what um, particular job role uh, needs to do within the organization rather than just learning about products or services. Then critical point here is around skills validation. Employers need to know that um, uh, their employees and candidates, uh, job seekers, uh, are demonstrating a certain skill set. And there's no better way to prove it than uh, to take a, a industry-led certification uh, that uh, by chance, of course, uh, is one of the most sought after globally at the moment. Uh, we run multiple education programs where we collaborate with universities, colleges, but also employment agencies where we offer free curriculum uh, for post-secondary uh, institutions as well as workforce development for non-traditional learners uh, because we believe that only when we invest together uh, in uh, education for, for those that normally would not have the access to, to such training opportunities, then we can only succeed. And finally, building on, on uh, again, uh, Commissioner's point, it is super critical to make sure that whatever we are learning ourselves and whatever the training programs are available, they are very 
uh, clearly linked to what employers are looking for. And so with our education programs, not only we uh, design curriculum that are that is uh, role based, but we also are connecting the learners and graduates with potential employers within the cloud ecosystem. Um, several uh, several uh, tactics uh, are um, implemented uh, by uh, our department. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention uh, a digital uh, platform with free uh, on-demand courses. They're available uh, anytime, anywhere. They're self-paced. More than 500 modules are available. You can get started from the very basics uh, of cloud concept uh, to more advanced uh, modules on machine learning or robotics. Then classroom training, which is still um, a requirement because cloud um, is changing the paradigm, but it is also complicated to, to learn how to, uh, how to do it, especially for those that don't have a technical background as of yet. And both in-person and virtual training is something that, uh, that we offer and we work with uh, numerous organizations around the world to, to bring it uh, to the learners. And uh, the aforementioned um, uh, certification is a way of uh, validating the skills. I'm pleased to say that, especially in the COVID context, all of the certification exams are available online with remote proctoring. So you don't have to leave your house um, to take the, the exam, uh, similarly to, uh, to the fact that you can work from home and uh, uh, deliver your uh, work tasks on on daily basis. Because in, in digital world, uh, we probably not necessarily need all the offices um, and the buildings that we've got today. Um, I mentioned uh, role-based learning, very click, quickly touching on that note. Um, cloud practitioner is something that, uh, uh, that will help you understand the basics of, uh, of cloud concepts. It is available uh, not just for technical individuals, but also for those that uh, work in marketing, procurement, legal, or other business departments in order to understand what cloud can offer. Uh, and what kind of uh, business use cases this can have uh, for your uh, for your uh, respective organizations, and then technical, more technical, uh, and deeper um, uh, 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 or more advanced skills are for architects, developer, and operations. You look at the uh, certification landscape; uh, you can pick and choose. Um, uh, the, the way you want to validate your skills depending on the level uh, of uh, technical skills you are. Starting from cloud practitioner, which is the fundamental level, but then uh, associate and professional level for those that are excelling in, um, uh, in experience with AWS Cloud. We also offer specialty areas. Uh, so the domains that uh, that you need to dive deeper into uh, in order to become an expert in that in the field, and these are such as advanced networking, uh, security, machine learning, or even Alexa skill builder. Um, these are the certification that uh, that will offer you uh, an, an upgrade of, on your curriculum and will uh, speak to your potential or current employer in terms of um, uh, valuing your input and your skill set. So I, I just wanted to highlight before concluding, uh, one of the uh, examples of the education programs that we are pursuing uh, across the globe and uh, in the European Union as well is the Restart program. Uh, and that is a, an example where we not only provide um, training opportunity, but we are directly connecting the learners that today don't have technical skills with employers that are ready to invest in entry-level cloud talent 
uh, and uh, make an impact in the society. There's overwhelming um, uh, skills gap in terms of uh, availability of ICT professionals on the market. So the alternative pipeline is something, pipeline of talent is something super critical to, co to come by. And that is where we work with government organizations, but also with uh, local uh, customers and partners to, um, to understand their needs and the demand uh, for, such cloud, uh, for such talent. Uh, currently in, the, in Europe, we've uh, got um, uh, the program going in, in the UK uh, and in France, uh, as well as in the Netherlands. But there are plans uh, ongoing and preparations uh, to have the program available in uh, uh, many more locations around Europe. And I wanted to conclude uh, with, a, with, a, with a little bit of a call to action on that note. Um, I believe that with alternative pipeline, um, it is the commitment from uh, governments and also from organization, organizations such as ours to invest in entry-level talent and bring uh, those that not, are not technical and are vulnerable today on the job market back to the system. But it is the commitment that we also look for uh, and look up to companies. Because if you, if you do not um, take that step into, into the future, it will be much, diff much more difficult to embrace the digital transformation in full. And with that, uh, I wanted to thank you for your attention. Hopefully that was um, uh, useful. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions and also follow up after the event uh, in terms of any potential collaboration opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you.